Hello, my name is Abdul Matayasiri and I'd like to welcome in another Boeing 737 video tutorial. In this video, I'd like to talk about wind correction or wind additive uh, that you need to add to your VRF speed. Ideally, you'll be doing that when you do the approach briefing and preparation for the approach, hopefully before the top of descent. And once you select the flaps, then you need to select the wind correction for that approach. So let me get, let me give you the summary for the video so you can use it as a review next time that you need the information and then we'll go in details. The wind co correction is half of the steady headwind plus all the gusts. Minimum is 5 knots. Maximum is 15. But in all cases it should not be more than uh, flap limit speed minus 5 knots. So if you are using let's say flaps 30 the maximum wind correction plus the uh, VRF is not gonna, should not be more than 170. Uh, personal tip, you can say it's being efficient or being lazy. Do not try to be 100% accurate in trying to figure out how much headwind you have and how much crosswind you have. Just make an educated guess. This is my personal opinion, but if you want to be accurate and just put the runway, and the wind direction in the in the uh, in the OBT, and then find exactly how much headwind and how much crosswind you have. Then, by all means, you can do that as well. All right. So with that said, let's dive in. For this video, we'll assume that the runway heading is three four two. So let's as let's say, and as you can see here, this is the course for the runway three four two. Let's say the reported wind was three four zero at two zero. So remember, we use half of the headwind. That's going to be 10 knots. So our wind correction is going to be 10 knots. Let's say the wind was 3, 4, 5 at 3, 0. So it's almost headwind. 30 by 2 is 15. And that's going to be our wind correction. Now let's assume that the reported wind was 3, 3, 0 at 1, 0. Gusting 3, 0. So remember, we use half of the headwind, that's going to be 5 knots, and then all of the gust. All of the gust is the difference between the reported gust and the steady headwind. So in this case, in this case we said 1, 0, at, uh, gusting 3, 0. 3, 0 minus 10 is 20, so this is all the gust. But if you go 5 plus 20, we'll end up with 25. And remember, our maximum wind correction is 15 knots. So we'll not put 25, but we'll just use 15 knots. Uh, let's say the reported wind was 074 at 20 gusting 25. That's almost a crosswind, but we have some gust. So for the uh, 20 knots, that's the crosswind. We'll just use 5 knots. And then all the gust, again, it's going to be 25 minus 20, so 5. So in that case, our wind correction is going to be 10 knots. Now for a tailwind, you don't add anything. You just use the default value of 5 knots. If you have a tailwind with a gust, I'm not sure that's going to be uh, a good runway to land in. You might want to change to the opposite runway. And uh, in all cases, again, for a tailwind, the maximum wind correction is 5 knots. Uh, unless your operator have the authorization to use 15 knots tailwind, in that case might be a little bit different, so make sure to check with your operation. Now, I said that you need to, uh, or you want to make an educated guess, instead of trying to figure out exactly how much headwind and crosswind you have. And for me personally, I use the RMI a lot to give me a good visualization of the runway and the wind direction. So in this uh, example, we are already uh, lined up with the runway and it is 3, 4, uh, 2 heading. So the winds 30 degrees on either side or 45 degrees are considered as all headwind. If it is more than 45 knots, then I reduce the headwind a little bit and consider it as a crosswind, for example. Let's say the reported wind was 050 at 15. If that was all headwind, I'll be using either 7 or 8 knots. 
But since I know now that it is mostly uh, almost like half headwind and half crosswind, I'll just use five knots as my wind correction. If the wind is more than 45 degrees, I'll consider it as all crosswind and I'll be adding the gust if the wind direction is in this side. If the wind, of course, is coming from this direction somewhere, that's going to be a tailwind and our wind correction is going to be five knots. So you can use it as a visualization. You don't have to be lined up with the runway, of course, because on uh, on the cruise, um, the runway might be here, the runway direction. So just again, you can use it as a way of estimating how much headwind and how much crosswind you have or if you have a tailwind for that approach. Now, the four places, uh, as I mentioned, to find the target speed. Now, this is going to be our target speed for the approach, VRF plus the wind correction. The first place that most pilots uh, utilize is the yoke here, the digits. So one, once they, they put the, uh, the wind correction, let's say here 150, they'll put 150 here in the yoke, and that's going to be the reminder. Uh, another way to find it, let's say now you are on the approach and you forgot how much wind correction that, uh, or what is your target speed, you can go to NETREF and find it here in the approach ref, you just add the two. Uh, one more place here in the legs page, after you load the approach and you put the wind correction, next to the runway, it will indicate for you your target speed. That's going to be VRF plus wind correction. And in the descent page here, once the, uh, the FMC sequence to the runway, so now your next point is going to be the runway after the final approach fix, the speed will be indicated here as well. So plenty of places to find it if you forget. And that's going to be a factor only if you are doing uh, an eyeless approach because the window is going to be open and you'll set it manually. If you are doing a VNAV, then the window is going to be closed and VNAV will take care of setting the target speed as uh, the uh, VRF plus the wind correction. Uh, one final point here. You have two CDUs. And for me, this is a very precious real estate. So if the information that you want is already displayed somewhere, let's say on the other CDU, you can just look at it. I'm not saying that go ahead and reach uh, the other side and make any changes or ask the other pilot to do any changes on his CDU. But if the page that you need the information from is there, just look and uh, get the information from there. Uh, the worst thing that both pilots can do is both be on the same page for a long time because again this is going to be a waste of uh, precious real estate if the page that you want is not there then by all means of course change and then get back to the uh, page that you want to be in me personally i think that the best configuration for these pages is pilot flying on the active page so either climb cruise or descent pilot monitoring should be on the progress page. Again, this is my personal uh, opinion about it. But if you want to change, like you are very close now to the runway, you want to see how much headwind, how much crosswind do you, you have, then by all means you can change it. But generally, I think the pilot flying should be on the active page and pilot monitoring should be on the progress page. And this way, both pilots will have uh, an access to a lot of information between the two uh, screens. So with that said, I hope that this uh, video would be of some benefit to you. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please let me know. And until next time, this is Abdul Mutayasiri. Wish you safe flying and smooth landing. Thank you for watching.